I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts and Lazy Girl Designs and welcome back to the Lazy Angle Basic Series. We're currently working on the Rhapsody quilt. In the first video, we went over fabric selection and how to plan out your quilt. In the next video, we made our two-step Lazy Angle blocks. In the third video, we cut our center squares and made our triangle flip companion blocks. And today we're going to work on the Flying Geese companion block. The Flying Geese companion block is made from two Flying Geese units. When put together, creates a square. There's many different methods to make Flying Geese blocks. The method I'm going to show you today uses the Flying Geese times four no math ruler. Additionally, if you don't have this ruler, I have provided you with the measurements inside the pattern. The ruler helps you to cut squares with no math to easily make Flying Geese blocks. I'm gonna show you how to cut and piece one large square four small squares into four identical flying geese units. All of the directions for what we're covering today are included on page eight and nine of your pattern and in the instruction manual that comes with the flying geese ruler. To make the companion blocks for Rhapsody, we're gonna need large squares from our focal fabric, small squares from one of our accent fabrics, as well as large and small squares from our background fabric. For the cutting demo, I'm gonna show you how to cut the large and the small from our background fabric. The same method is used for cutting these squares and these squares. Here I have my background fabric folded as it was on the bolt. You can see right here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and square up this edge. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to line up one of the lines along the fold and trim. Now I'm going to use the flying geese ruler to go ahead and cut my squares. On the flying geese ruler, you'll see letters A through L on the solid lines, as well as A through L on the dashed lines. Those are what we're gonna focus on. We want units that are going to be three and a half by seven finished, because when put together, they will yield a seven inch block. So I can see that the three and a half by seven is the L. So for my small squares, I'm gonna need the dotted L, and for my large squares, I'm gonna need the solid L, which is the size of the whole ruler. So if you are just cutting from your scraps, you can go ahead and line the ruler up and cut. But if you're cutting from strips, how do you do that? What you wanna do is take your ruler, and in this case, I have my dashed L, and I'm lining this up on my ruler, and then I'm gonna take this ruler and butt it right up next to it, and I'm gonna make sure I'm flush with the fold up here. I'm gonna go up and down to make sure I stay on that dotted L line. And this is where the no math part comes in. No need to measure what size squares that I need. Go ahead and cut my strip. And now I'm going to take that strip and I'm gonna to continue to pay attention to my L dotted line. And I'm gonna trim off my selvages. Rotate my fabric around and cut using my L line down the length of my strip. And I'll repeat that with strips until I have all the small L squares that I need as listed in number four on the middle of page eight. Now I need some large L's. I'm going to need my focus fabric for the blocks on page eight and my background fabric for the blocks on page nine. I'm gonna show you cutting with the background fabric because I have it all right, ready to go. So my large L is the full size of my ruler. So this line is already squared up from my last cut. So I'm simply gonna take my whole ruler, line it up, get my straight ruler, line that up, make sure I'm square on the fold again and slide it up and down to make sure I stay exactly where I need to be. Looks like I'm off a tiny bit at the top there, so let's adjust. And cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the selvage. Rotate this around to cut my large L squares. 
Now this ruler is in no way required. I do give you the math in the pattern, but the numbers are, um, some of them end in a quarter and three eighths, and not all rulers have three eighths, and it can be easy to lose track of and make the wrong cut. So what this ruler really does is it just makes things easy because all you have to do is remember what letter you need. So I'll repeat cutting as many large L squares from the background as needed as shown in number two on the top right of page nine. Once you have everything cut, it's time to begin piecing. The process is the same for both. I'm gonna show you with this one for our example. So I'm gonna begin with one large square and two small squares to start. And I'm gonna flip these to the wrong side and I want to draw a diagonal line from one point to the other. This is gonna end up in your seam allowance, um, so you don't need to worry about what marking device you're using, but pencil or something I usually find is best. I'm gonna try and make it dark so you can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it on the other one as well. Now I am going to take these and I'm going to place them in opposite corners. So my top right and my bottom left. And I want the lines to connect. And these will overlap in the middle, that is supposed to happen. And your line should now go from corner to corner. I'm gonna pin this in place and head on over to the machine. And at the machine, I'm going to sew two lines, a quarter inch to the right and a quarter inch to the left of this line. I've gone ahead and pinned my squares in place. And as I mentioned, I wanna sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. If you can leave your quarter inch foot on to know exactly where that is, that's what I find the best. If not, you can go ahead and draw two additional lines if you find that helpful. This method yields four flying geese blocks with no trimming. So you do wanna make sure that your sewing is accurate as we will not be trimming these down. I always have my scrap, as you know. I like to sew on that so I don't end up with that nest of threads here when I'm beginning sewing on my piece. And I'm simply going to line up my quarter inch guide straight on this line. And when you get to the middle, just make sure nothing flips since you do have an overlap there. Just gonna raise my presser foot up, pull a little bit of thread out, and begin sewing down the other side. So I want to cut along my drawn line, and you can use your flying geese ruler or your jumbo lazy angle, whatever you have handy. And this doesn't need to be perfect because your seams are already sewn, just approximately a quarter of an inch. Once they're cut in half, they're going to create these funky looking hearts as shown on the top of page nine. And we wanna go ahead and press these seams open before we add the next piece. I find that that helps everything to lay as flat as possible. I like to finger press and then press with my iron. Quick reminder, pressing is up and down. Ironing is pushing along your surface. We iron our clothes. We press our quilt blocks. Give it a little press from the front as well and repeat with the other one. I've gone ahead and drawn my diagonal lines on my two other pieces, and now we are going to place them in the last remaining corners. So this is what it's gonna look like. And then after it's sewn, as you can imagine, there's our flying geese block. I'm gonna go ahead and pin these in place. I have my third and fourth squares pinned in place, and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of the line, just as I did for my first seams. Uh, 
it's time to cut these. Again, we're going to cut on our drawn line so that we have approximately a quarter inch on either side. And head on over to the iron. Now we just need to press these seams open and we will have four identical flying geese units. And if you need a little help when pressing your seams open, you can always use a heat resistant stiletto. So you don't have to worry about getting your fingers anywhere close to the iron. So as you can see, pretty quickly and pretty easily, we went ahead and turned one large square and four small squares into four flying geese units. So we're gonna repeat those steps with our focus fabric large squares and background small squares to make our other flying geese units. Once you have all of your flying geese units made, we're gonna go ahead and sew them into a square. So we wanna make sure that we have our long sides facing each other, because that's how this quilt is designed and piece this with the same scant quarter inch seam that we've been using for the project so far. We're simply going to flip them right sides together, line up the diagonals on top of each other, pin in place and head to the machine. As I mentioned, to complete my seven and a half inch square, I need to go ahead and piece these two together. So I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm going to line this up now, if you prefer to press this way and press this way so that you can nest these seams, that's your personal preference. You can go ahead and do that. I prefer to keep all of my seams pressed open for my quilt. So I'm simply going to line that up on top of itself here, place a pin, check my other corner. And as you notice, these are not perfect quarter inch seams. And that's because I wasn't necessarily perfect when I was cutting down the middle of my flying geese. Doesn't mean that my flying geese measurements are wrong. It just means that I didn't perfectly cut on my drawn line. Now I'm going to sew down the length of this piece. I do find a stiletto can be helpful here to make sure that none of the seams flip. Now I'm gonna go over to my iron and I'm going to press the seam open because this point is going to intersect with my lazy angle in some of my blocks. So I want things to be nice and flat to have the best success of lining those up. Now that we have made our lazy angle blocks and the three different companion blocks, the next step is putting them together into the quilt block, and we'll go over that in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to like it, share your comments with us, and subscribe to the channel. If you've not yet signed up for the Sew Along emails, you can do so at the link posted in the caption below. I'll see you back here in the next video to work on putting our blocks together.